Welcome to the channel everyone. Well, here is my 2002 Trailblazer that I paid only $800 for over a year ago and it has a slight engine knock. I've had a lot of little things done to it, but it's paid for itself about two or three times already. So I've decided to go ahead and keep it into the winter months. Now I've replaced some minor little things. Uh, you know, brake rotors, uh, a couple of little sensors here and there, but nothing too expensive, which has really been a great uh, thing for me. And also, the other thing I replaced recently was the blower resistor. Now, on the uh, Trailblazer earlier, before I'd replaced that, if I would go to speed number four, it would just be dead. I would go under here, pull the panel off, shake that plug, and nothing would happen. But when I pulled the plug off and looked at the resistor, it looked like it was bad, so I replaced the resistor, and that took care of the problem. Now, the other day, it went off for some reason. And let me show you real quick. I've got the ignition on. There's one. There's two. I just, yeah, there's one. One is working. Two, three is working. I think you can hear that. And when I hit four, nothing it's dead again but when i go to five it works great so what the issue now is is this guy right here that i just picked up and this here is the connector that actually goes to the blower resistor now the problem that we have with a lot of these trailblazers and gm products uh, especially with these wires going to the blower uh, when you have it on number five a lot of these wires will get really hot and the connector here will eventually over time corrode get so hot it will actually melt the plastic out so we've actually got to replace one of these uh, so what we're going to do here this one here was only six dollars and you get all these connectors now you can use the connectors or you can just pull these wires back clip the one underneath and just get you some solder get you some heat shrink and do it professionally like that or you can just do a quick job like that i am possibly thinking about just going ahead soldering and using some nice heat shrink to make it look really good what we have to do now is go up under here and there's a kick panel we have to take out two little screws this will allow us to drop this out and this will give us access into the harness that goes into the blower resistor that we're going to replace those wires for so overall this should not be a very tough job just takes a little patience and time setting up and getting these wires cut and getting all this together and now before we get into the video i'd like quickly to thank today's sponsor it is called the verasa portable vacuum cleaner it is a small vacuum cleaner that you can actually keep in your glove box and use it anytime you want it comes in a little carrying bag when you take it out first thing you notice how small it is it'll just fit just about anywhere you don't have to worry about dragging out a big vacuum cleaner when you have small messes like this also it has this nice little handle where you can kind of grip it here and kind of work away at it and as we take the end of it off here this is the part that does all the magic it sucks all the little fine hair and particles off your seat like you see here if you're a neat freak like me you like to keep everything nice and clean sometimes it's just a pain to pull out a big vacuum cleaner to do a small job the beauty about this is you you can plug it in right here into a USB card charger, charge it up, and work away. And of course, it's not going to pick up big debris. It's just going to pick up those annoying little pieces of uh, cookies, uh, crackers that you've been eating on the seat, even cat and dog hair if you have a cat or a dog that you travel with a lot. And it makes the job really easy. And when you're done, just simply unscrew the top here off. This is where all the debris gets. You pull the filter out like this, and you pull this off, and you simply just clean it out. You can blow it out, take a fine brush, and it's reusable, and you're good to go again. A nice little vacuum cleaner for portable jobs when you don't want to go to the car wash and spend 2 or $3. And for charging, like I said earlier, you just plug it into a USB port like that and simply plug it in right here and let it charge up and when you do that and you'll see three LED lights and you can see it's charging we have one blinking and that means it's almost 80% charged charges is in about an hour and real quick here are all the attachments you get you get a really long attachments for areas getting down in where you can't really normally get and you have an extension here with a little brush on it and you have a cleaner and of course the USB-C charging cable And of course, my storage area is going to be right here, no problem, and go on with your life. 
And once again, thanks for sponsoring this video. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Now, on with the fix here. So we'll get into my junk box here. We'll grab our 7 millimeter uh, little socket. We've got a couple screws we've got to take off. And, of course, this kick panel has two. It has one over here. At least they made it easy to get this off. And we've got one over here on this side. I think you can see that. And uh, this will give us the excess, just about everything under here. The blower, the wires, and all that. Get this out of here. Alright, so let's pop this down. Out that comes. Alright, so we got that off. Let's go up under here, and here is the wire. Right there. And i uh, tell you what, before I pull that out, let's go ahead and turn the key on. Actually, the key is on. Let's go ahead and turn the fan on one. Two, is one working? Yeah, it's working very low, but two's working. Three's working, you can hear it. Let's go to four. Of course, it's dead. And if I hit five, yep, you'll hear it. So let's go on four, let's go under here. And I think we just shake this wire a little bit. You'll get the idea. Watch this as I shake this plug. See? If I go of it, quit. So it's in this plug, and look right there, yeah, it's melted. Melted in a couple places as my light just went out. So this is what we're going to replace. Let's count the wires here. Of course, these wires are collared, and, uh, and uh, of course, these are not. So you have to be careful when you hook this up. Make sure you don't get them all mixed up. Do one at a time is the best thing to do, and uh, make sure the plug-ins are the same, and uh, they look like they're pretty much the same here once I get them kind of set up here we can see it. alright now let's check it and see the wire everything looks the same yep identical actually you can see this one here is plastic it's completely melted and this one over here on the right it's melted up in there and that connector is burnt but the wires look good so what we're gonna do is one at a time we'll just uh, start on the right we'll cut it here and we'll cut the well actually we, we're not going to cut these we're just going to pull these back a little bit and add this on and slowly do this over time bring out the soldering gun and uh, get some heat shrink put on there and uh, go from there so i'm gonna go ahead and actually stick this on there make sure it fits okay all right yep fits on there just like it should so uh, i guess we'll go ahead and put this together yep when you push it up on there sometimes it'll click sometimes it won't there it clicked that time now it's on so all right so let's go ahead and uh put all this together oh and one other thing before i forget i've seen some guys actually pull these wires out of this harness say this one here and actually just pull these wires out and put this on there like that but the problem you get into sometimes if these connectors are bad then you still have to cut this off and reuse it and use the new one with the new connector so there is a little tab right here if you play around with this long enough you can get this off but you risk a chance of breaking this right here so this is why most of the time it's better to do this but if your wires are in really good shape and are not burnt you could probably try that but i still think it's best that we either clip these on here or solder them on and we never have to worry about it again just so you know all right guys so there's no going back now so let's go ahead make sure we're on the right side here one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven we got seven wires and we're going to make our first cut we'll start on this side and uh goodbye all right so we'll pull this one back and i've got these guys here uh you can actually get these for about 20 bucks less than 20 dollars this is a pretty decent quality one and it works pretty good. Makes stripping wires really just a, a nice job. You don't have to worry about, you know, taking something else and a cheap pair of pliers or something and trying to get it apart. So we'll get this apart here really good. Go back a little ways with it. And we'll take our wire here. And we'll go ahead and do this one too now i noticed the wiring on this is not quite as heavy as the factory one but it'll still work just fine if you're not going to have the trailblazer or your vehicle very long the packet you know it may last actually a long time but uh from what i've found i usually don't have much of a problem with these uh, uh breaking or melting all right we'll just get a little bit more on this one here i actually got a 
move this back a little bit. I need to learn how to work this tool. It's been a while since I've used it. I've forgotten how to work it. <laughs> All right, so we'll go ahead and I'm actually going to make this one just a little bit longer too. All right, and now, like I said, we're going to solder. Before we solder, let's get our piece of heat shrink put on there. We're just going to slide this together and kind of twist it like that. Put some solder on it, and this is how we're going to do all of them. So uh, let me get my heat shrink before I forget. All right, as you can see, I'm prepared to have a little bit of everything here. Uh, here's my heat shrink. I got this for like $6. I think we'll use some black. I have plenty of those. So we'll just grab a few of these and take go over there and start working. Also, I have this pretty cool little heat gun here for 12 bucks. Uh, works pretty good. We'll use it, and you can watch me use it also. All right, so we'll go ahead and put our first piece of heat shrink on there. Slide it up under here. Push it up a little ways. There's actually some tape here. I'm just going to take that tape and kind of wrap it around it so it doesn't fall down in my way. And now we can go ahead and start planning on how we want to do this. Now, I need one of these tools right here. See that? Yeah, I don't know whatever happened to mine. Someone borrowed it and never brought it back. So we're going to have to somehow figure out how to hold this other wire up. I'm actually take a wire here, a clothes hanger, kind of hold that up. So these are connected like this so I can actually solder it. So let's see if we can figure that one out real quick. Oh, actually, I'll just take the rest of my wires and run it through a hole there. Let that hang. And now we got this all together right here. And now all I got to do is go get my soldering gun. Put some solder on it. All right, so we're ready to do it. I've got the cheapest uh, soldering gun known to mankind. Walmart $10 job. And uh, hopefully I have enough solder here. We'll see. But uh, we'll do what we can. You know, it's all you can do, right? Take your time, make it work. All right, we got solder there. And we got some on the top. All right, that looks good. Let's see if I can get some on the bottom there a little bit. Yeah, you got to have some patience with this. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, it's just something you got to take your time at. All right, so that looks good there. I'm going to see if I can spin that wire around just a little bit there. And we'll use a little solder on the bottom there real quick side here and I apologize you probably can't see it all that well but trust me it's going all right all right so that's done there it looks pretty good hey yeah all right not bad I'm happy all right so let's go ahead and get our heat shrink pulled down here and remember we got to do a bunch more so let's go ahead and put that like that and now let's go get our little heat gun. All right, so the heat gun we're going to be using here is something called QST Express Jingoing <laughs> uh, heat tool. Uh, it's a pretty powerful little thing here. It uh, gets up to how many watts is it? I believe it says, oh, it's right in front of me, 300 watts. It's a 110 volt little uh, tool. And uh, it's pretty simple to use. You even got a little thing here where you can kind of prop it up. And just a simple little cord. And you get some instructions with it. Anyway, let's go over and use it real quick. All right, so let's plug her in. You can see how loose it is right now. The, uh, so I, there you, I think you can sit better that way. You can see how loose that is. So let's go ahead and center that make sure we're right where we want it to be. Turn this on and watch that heat shrink, shrink down. Doesn't take very long. You got to be careful because you can melt it. This thing here is pretty powerful. And I think we're done. Yep. You don't want to get too close. All right, so check that out. Nice. All right, so go ahead and do the other ones.
All right, guys, I believe it or not, I just had enough solder. Check this out. This is all the solder I got. <laughs> Used quite a bit. So what I did on this, uh, I just took a wire and just kind of hung it up right here to help me hold this a little bit. Now all I gotta do is put my heat shrink on and I think we are done. Now all we gotta do is just go ahead and put everything back together here in a few minutes and see how it's gonna work. All right, we'll go ahead and do our last one here, heat shrink. All right, so it's all done. You know, it was probably a little more work than it was worth, but you know, I'm never gonna have a problem with it again. I'll just put some tape around it, electrical tape, and we'll plug it in, and we'll see if all five speeds work like they should now. All right, so we got it plugged in. It snapped in really good, and I pull on it. It stays up in there. I'll take some electrical tape and wrap around this and push it up in there, but you can see these wires are never gonna short out. But I did short it out earlier. Here's the fuse. I've shorted out that hot wire accidentally. I left the uh, ignition on when I wasn't really paying attention. Shorted it out. And if you do do this and you hook everything up, doesn't work. Your fuse is right here. It's the second one. It's supposed to be a 40 amp fuse. I'll pop the top of this off when I pulled off my clippers, but I replaced that. And now we have a working fan. Check this out. Walk around here real quick. Sorry about the lawn mowers today. Everyone's mowing. Let's right, crank it up. All right, wait for the ding in the stop. I don't think you're gonna be able to hear the fan running, but I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll let the battery charge for a second. Okay, I'm gonna shut it off. Just leave the key on so you can hear it. All right, so let's hit number one here and see what we got. All right, it works. Number two working you can probably hear it number three it's working and the one that didn't work before number four yeah and number five working great you can probably hear the noise difference so that took care of the problem guys so hopefully uh this little video will help you guys out if you have this problem if you want to tackle this and you can see pretty well shot and if you look closely a couple of those are burnt plastics melted so we're never going to have to worry about this again and that should work for the rest of the year and into the winter months and hopefully uh, this will help you guys out so if you enjoyed the video guys give it a uh, like and uh, let me know where you're watching from and until my next video guys i'll see you later